I think it's it has become increasingly common, like in the past twenty years, I would sure. say. Yeah. So especially graduate school, I think that's the most common option. The outlier. Um, I would say it's fifty fifty. A lot of people I knew stayed because they just wanted to stay within Canada. Um, in my later years in university, when I started to um, meet other people applying to graduate school, I learned that there are a fair amount of people also applying outside of Canada. Um, so yeah, I would say it is 50-50 because it depends on if the person wants to leave the country or not. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like 60% in my university. Wow. So most of them will, went to, uh, will go to U.S. for master degrees. And there will be like 10% of us will go there and want to get a PhD degree. And there are also like 20% of students will go to Europe or Singapore or like Australia, some other countries for graduate studies. And there is like 20% left. They will go to work or maybe um, study in my home country for a master or PhD degrees. I mean, it's already a small percentage that continue with math. A lot of people also like just find a job and uh, do that or maybe switch yeah. uh, from math to some other field or something like that. Sure, yeah. I think it's not very common. The thing to keep in mind is that, especially at ETH, they tell you that a bachelor's degree is worth nothing. They want, really want you to keep on going and get your master's degree. So therefore, most people just do their, keep on doing their studies at ETH and finish up with a master's. And then the percentage of people who pursue a PhD is relatively low. So also, it's somewhat more convenient to do a PhD in Europe because your professors may have more connections with other professors from other universities. And visa issues are somewhat easier. Uh, I think uh, from an institution, uh, it's really common. Maybe more than half of the people come here to do their PhD, and the other one, the other half, like try goes to Europe or Canada. And so I think it's fairly common to come here. It's always been like popular. I mean, the the Indian diaspora here is like probably the, one of the biggest ones anywhere so <laughs> so that answers a lot of questions there yeah oh um, what I think what matters the most to me is the potential advisors so I talked to three professors from here and I'm really interested in their research and also everyone here is very friendly I think that's also important because you don't do research alone, you talk to people, and you exactly. collaborate, so a conducive environment is very important. It has a very good reputation as a good spot to learn number theory and algebraic geometry, and since I'm currently somewhat undecided between whether I should do algebraic geometry or more algebraic geometry with direction to number theory, this is the perfect spot for me to explore what I want to do exactly without having to like jump into some topic without being 100% committed to, to that th research direction. Um, so when I came to the recruitment weekend, I, I wasn't sure, honestly, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in Canada or leave. But the department was just so supportive. Um, that was one huge thing that um, influenced my decision. Um, there was one, one other thing was that the department is so large that I realized that even if I'm not sure about what I want to research, I can change, and it's not the biggest deal. Um, so overall, it was the, the how large the department one it was and the supportiveness. Mm -hmm. I think the first reason is it's the reputation. I will know U Michigan for like t three years at least. So I've heard that there are a lot of faculties in number theory and algebra geometry. So uh, if I can choose to go here, I have a l great opportunity to choose my advisor. There are a lot of potential advisors. This is one reason. I really like how friendly the people are and how open people are. And <laughs> um, 
Michigan in particular seem to have very nice uh, professors that really took the time to also Skype with me. I think it's been pretty good so far in the sense that I've, I've, uh, I've bought into the making students buy-in concept. <laughs> so so as, as long as the students feel like they're doing this for a purpose and um, like, like they see reason to do math the way it's done, I think they're going to cooperate and they're going to make your life a, a real lot easier. I think we are we are friendly, but they also respect me. Uh, I think it's, it's been a bit hard because uh, I want them to be interested in, maybe they are not that interested in, it's hard to know how to engage them. And, but I have like a really good students and that's really nice and I, I enjoy the time working with them. It's really nice to have like good work and get to know them better and yeah, it's great. <laughs> I don't know. Has it been, like, do you find that students are very motivated and want to learn from you? Do you find that you kind of have to push them along? Is it some combination? Is it good, bad? I don't know. I think I have a really difficult time knowing like what they need and what they want out of this class. Some people seem very motivated at first and then stop showing up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just so difficult. I, I don't know. <laughs>